Hello viewers, we'll be going over the S&P 500 ETF ticker symbol SPY. In this video, we'll be going over the day-by-day -day probability model, the technical performance of the models, how we find the models, and the day-by-day -day forecast for the S&P 500. So back to the technical analysis, today we're down 1.8% on the 1-hour chart. We were on positive MACD, however we may approach to negative MACD very soon. If we expand that further to the 4-hour chart, we are very close to positive MACD. However, depending on today, we may see a reversal in this minor uptrend. On the daily chart, we saw a convergence that was made back in March 26. And we also see a convergence on the 9-day moving average, this blue line, converging onto the 18-day moving average, this purple line. That is a positive sign, however, it could be a false positive on a reversal, so there is still time to see. We may head down lower in the next possible days, reason why. We do have a gap up between March 23rd and March 24th. We do need to fill in that gap in order to have a healthy reversal in the long term. So at the moment, we do see a possible support that support was made back in March 23rd around the price of $218. And as for resistance, we had trouble break, reaching above 262 or 261 around that range. And we failed to break above it three times, one on March 26th, March 30th, and back in March 31st. So if we would do manage to climb higher, that price movement is roughly around 5.8% to re pass resistance and to fall back to support, that is around 11.2% to the downside. So let's head back to the day-by-day -day probability model. Again, that model is now available in the link below, so do check it out. So as the days progress to the seventh day, we do have a 63% chance of the S&P 500 to climb higher between 0 to 10% and a 13% chance for the S&P 500 to climb higher between 10 to 20%. On the other hand, we have a 25% chance for the S&P 500 to fall between 0 and negative 10%. And if we examine the day-by-day Forecast for the S&P 500, we have one day out, two days out, three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So which one of these models we should focus on? Ideally, the model that is best matched to the current trend. Right here, we have the current trend, and below is a trend that I believe is the best match to the current trend. This trend dates back to July 30th, 2008 to October 23rd, 2008. So let me point out why these two charts are similar. So what we have here on the current trend, we start off at the upper Bollinger Band. And after touching the upper Bollinger Band, we average below the middle Bollinger Band, touching the bottom Bollinger Band. Next, we see a reversion to the mean. And as indicated, we failed to break above the middle Bollinger Band. So we do still have downward selling pressure in place. So at the moment, we have those three points on the current trend, and now we examine the trend in question. We start off at the upper, upper Bollinger Band, and then after touching the upper Bollinger Band, we proceeded to average below the middle Bollinger Band and touch the bottom Bollinger Band. So right towards the very end, we do revert back to the mean, and we have those points there. So what we have here on the trend in question, we have one, two, three points. We also have one, two, three points. So there's reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly the same. So the model that we just examined was July 30th, 2008 to October 23rd, 2008. Back then, the S&P 500 climbed roughly around 5% to the upside. And if we head back to the day-by-day probability model on the seventh day that coincides with this standard deviation of 63% chance between 0 and 10%. So let's examine the technical performance of each model. And right here on the current trend, we're down 35% from monthly high. 
up 11% from monthly low, down or up 11 basis points from 10 simple moving average, down 1% from 20 simple moving average, and down 15% from 50 simple moving average. And the trend that we just examined was July 30th, 2008 to October 23rd, 2008. At this moment, or at that point in time, it was down 42% from monthly high, up 3% from monthly low. It was down 3% from 10 simple moving average, down 9% from 20 simple moving average, and down 20% from 50 simple moving average. One thing to note, the trend back in 2008 was much lower than where we currently are. As indicated at the monthly low, at that trend, there was only up 3%, and the trend we are currently at is around 11%. So there is still risk to the downside, and that is one thing to consider. It may not climb higher with 5%, reason why. Back in 2008, it was at a much lower price, as indicated with the simple moving average. This was negative, this is positive, and the extreme on the percent down is much different from between negative 1% and negative 9%. So do take that in consideration. Again, this model is now available in the link below, so do to check it out. If you enjoy this content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.